Good luck. I'm at the altar, sweating in my wool suit. She is glowing in her white dress. Asks me the most important question of my life. Ryan, do you promise me? Before I make my commitment, I let my mind rewind like an old school VHS tape. And it takes me back to high school when I would plead with my mom to let me go to parties. Mom, please let me go. There'll be no alcohol, I promise. Mom in her nightgown and bunny slippers smiled sweetly. All right, I trust you. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, anybody who's ever lied to mama before. <laughs> We're having fun in a field of small town Texas. My friend Taylor passes me another beer when bright lights freeze us in place. The man behind the light, big belly over a belt buckle, lip full of dip, Sheriff Snodgrass. Caught us red-handed, Red Solo cups in hand. <laughs> Boys, it's your lucky night. Either fill this bag to the top with cigarette butts, or we start calling mamas. We grabbed that bag, and there we were, three macho teenagers, Taylor, Eric, and, well, two macho teenagers and me crawling in a semi-sober state, collecting soggy cigarette butts all night. Next morning, we took that bag. We dropped it off at the station. There is some angry southern woman yelling in a nightgown and bunny slippers. <laughs> like a human bulldozer, mom plows through the crowd. Son, what happened? Mom. If you ever worried about me smoking, don't. <laughs> Guys and I had to pick up five pounds of cigarette butts. Why, Ryan? There was alcohol at the party, Mom. Son, I'm disappointed. Worse, I can't believe you. Trust is a must. Times have changed. When Dad and I were your age, we picked up seven pounds. <laughs> it took me a long time to earn Mom's trust back. And after a summer of her house arrest, it was my senior year and I became a wannabe entrepreneur. This man offered me buckets of money to build him a website. New car, here I come. I spent weeks hunched in a chair, glued to a screen, typing on a Cheeto-stained keyboard. I finished. We met, handed over the files. He checked for his checkbook, couldn't find it. Promised he would send a check over immediately. No problem. We shook hands, I'll get paid in a couple days. Well, a couple days passed. And where I'm from, handshakes mean something. I called him. His phone's disconnected. I Googled him. He gave me a fake name. What? I complained to mom, and do you know what she said? Trust is a must, isn't it, son? Don't you hate when parents are right? Like one of those annoying hotel alarm clocks, it woke me up. How was I supposed to expect a man to keep a handshake when I couldn't even keep a promise to mom? I learned a promise is only as good as the person who makes it. I was finally able to leave small town Texas and I went to college in Colorado. And I met the girl. Tall, curly hair, a tattoo or two.
she is beautiful and I'm just some punk with pimples. And after a few hours of laughing, she is bringing home to mama material. A couple dates later, I was up front and honest, Chelsea, I'm not looking for a girlfriend, I'm looking for a wife. I'm leaving the country, won't be back for seven months, and I want kids. Warning though, this, 12 pounds at birth. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> I have no idea how I convinced that girl to be my girlfriend, but I did. And we started building our foundation of trust 3,000 miles apart. I wrote her a handwritten letter every day while I was gone. I doodled what our future kids would look like, dreamed of still holding her hand at 90, decided no bunny slippers. <laughs> when I got back home, I met with Chelsea's parents, and I got that seal of approval. I told them, one day, I'll have more business experience. I'll do my best raising a couple 12-pound babies. I will love that girl when her curls turn gray. Before the wedding, my mom reminded me that trust is a must if I want this marriage to last. I am at the altar, sweating in my wool suit, and Chelsea is glowing in her white dress. Chelsea, I promise. <laughs>